recording too. I remember who they started with, but the, okay. they put out the, the first adventure game on the Apple that was Mystery House. Jeez, I sold a lot of computers with Mystery House. Okay, that. so we're recording and we'll be live, though it's One still minute. 1259. We're actually on, you know, before. Oh, we're before. We're well, recording. We're one, on... minute, we're one minute uh, early. All right. Woohoo! One minute early. Wow. <laughs> that way, when people get here, we'll already be here, right? Wow. Talk about really having our crap together. Huh? <laughs> we, are, look... we are 30 seconds ahead of schedule. Woo! Man, I wasn't sure about it. I was gonna that was gonna happen. Yeah, well, we'll I I wasn't taking any chances. Okay, I'm gonna move my uh I'm gonna move my iron down to uh I don't think I need quite that much heat down. Yeah. I'd rather cut stuff off of the video than have to figure out how to add it back in. Yeah. And, and the other the other thing I, I got the overhead. I wanted to tell people was the fact that probably should have picked a slightly bigger tip on that iron yesterday. Okay. This page keeps. Okay. Let's see if I can join. Let's see what it does. Turn my local audio off. Oh, yeah, we are live. Oh, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> now, we we'll probably wait a minute or two to see if people join. But we are broadcasting. We are. because From I... the remote QRPME remote broadcast studios. Yeah. Okay. Now I can see comments there and comments here. I don't know if that means okay. we're going to get but we can't... the number of comments. But if actually if they joined and just sent us a comment, I'm here, I'm here, or something yeah. like that, we could actually get a because we can't we can't see who's logged in, how many Join people we have. Screen. So we don't know if we should be please say hello. Hello. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. We're just oh. sort of waiting. Oh yeah, I got a Kevin. Or Kevin. I got a couple. One named Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, we're live. And I put in a note that says when you join it, good. Now everybody can see the comments today. So all I right. Nice, had a nice chalk with chalk. chalk. I had a talk today. I had a nice talk with Eric last night about making so everybody can see all the comments. So. Yeah, that was pretty so pretty uh, yeah. iffy. Yeah. So, so maybe we'll give more a second. interaction, which is what we like. Yeah. Interaction. Yeah. So maybe we'll give a minute or two for people. Yeah, to we're gonna. In. Yeah, this today's uh, bill is gonna be a lot better than yesterday's bill. <laughs> um, I probably should have inverted these because uh, the the uh, uh, even though the the Limerick construction or Manhattan construction is is cool and it's easy and uh, you still got the prep work that you have to do. You got to bend the little parts to make fit the pads. Um, so that that takes some time. And if you didn't do it on Friday, you weren't going to be able to keep up. Um, in this case, this is a straight through hole board. Uh, Pads and holes. So, you know, all we got to do is bend the parts and put them in. And decide nice. which direction you go in. So it should be pretty simple. Good. We got a number of all people right. saying they're back. and They're back. Yep. Boma, uh, James, David, Reginald, Kevin. Yeah, we, we've got a number of people. So How about Jennifer? Is Jennifer there? Uh, well, we'll find out. <laughs> okay. Paul, you there, Paul? Yeah, I haven't seen a, I haven't seen Paul. It's weird. They don't all. Not quite sure how these things are supposed to go. Okay. All right. I am back. Oh, I see. They scroll the other way. Okay. Hopefully, everybody can see everybody's comments, too. That'll help. Yes. Okay. So, today's different. We are building the transmitter, transceiver part of this station. Um, this is a straightforward circuit board with through holes, large pads. It's designed like... I need that thing off. <laughs> What, this? Yeah. Can I get that off so I can... Oh, oh, oh. So you I don't can want see. the little title I want, thing? I want to be able to well, see. Hold the board up in front of the camera. Well, I don't want to keep doing that, you know, down here. I want to be able to see down here. Okay. So, uh, in this case, this is uh, typically one of my standard billathon boards. Uh, and if you look at it, uh, the silk screen sort of says it all. Uh, uh, let's see. I got to reverse my travel here. Yeah. Um, the parts are identified by what they are, you know, with the silkscreen logo, but then the actual ID of the part is not R22, 23, 24. It's the actual value. And in billathons, I like to do that because if you pick up a part or you find a you find a spot you want to put something in, you know exactly. You don't have to go back to 
to a uh, schematic or anything. And in fact, I'm building this right today. I don't have a, I got a blank piece of paper right here. I do not have a bill of materials. I don't have a schematic. I don't have anything. So that should slow me down a little bit. So maybe you guys can keep ahead, keep, uh, keep up with me. So we're going to tear into these bags. You should have gotten uh, one baggie with the transceiver parts. Um, and then it's unmarked, but, but you see it was the smaller of the bags. It didn't have all those big things in it. And then the other one should have a T or should be the remainder of your AT bag that you got, which were the late bringing parts. So we're going to take, um, we're going to take the parts and spread them out. I'm going to put the board aside for a minute. Go and, a little lower. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay. I got to remember where the center of my workspace is here. Okay. So when you do that, what I like to do is I get a, Paul is a, here. Paul says hey, good hi, Paul. Okay. Hey, Paul. Okay. Says hey, Paul. Good morning. Well, Stephen think, says good morning. I think that's the only one I remember. Was, AE5 VM. Yeah, that's Paul from New Mexico. Okay, so I take all the obvious big parts and get them out of the way. Um, things that I know are going to be towards the end of the build anyway. Mechanical stuff, um, crystal, you know, things that you that you are not building right off the bat. So then I can separate... And I got my little piece of paper. Um, now, fortunately for me, you know, I've been <laughs> I've been living with this kit now for over a month. Uh, I can identify the parts uh, by by memory. But we're gonna we're just laying all these parts out on a piece of paper and separating them to uh, what what they look like. Here's a connector. There's two connectors there. Here's a choke. Here's a choke. Here's a choke. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, should be five chokes. So there's the chokes right there. Two transistors. Uh, I put, I put the big transistor in here, so we won't worry about that right now. Here's a diode. Uh, this, the bill of materials has three transistors. Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's okay. one. I said two. I, there's two TO. Oh, sorry. Ah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me bring this piece of paper in where I'm putting them on. Yep. I've got the bill of materials on the screen, too. Okay. So, so there's two TO92 transistors, and then there's a big one in the can. So the, that's the 3906, that's the, the 2N222, and then the big one in the can is the 30, TO5. Yep. Yeah, that's the TO5. That's it called call a TO5 can. Yep. Um, that's your final output transistor, and it's bigger, and it's in a can, and we're yep. going to put a heat sink on it so it can take the Take the full brunt of we got two diodes here and then you got a 386 somewhere is that one of the big parts you put in your can yes yeah, okay. yeah i you know the ic yeah. that's towards the end of the build yep. i'm trying to get the capacitors and the resistors oh, uh, resistors 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 and the okay. eight one uf capacitors are probably in two chunks of yeah four. two chunks of four right there I remember you remember that. kitting those yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay these are the ones that are hard to kit because they're so hard to get a hold of and we get them in a bulk bag and yeah. you got to get them out there and they have a tendency to, to take a hike sometimes when we put them in a, there were a few on the floor afterwards. Yeah. And we had a few spare parts left over. So I'm just going to cut the uh, tape off of these. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to put resistors down. They're the, they're probably the first thing you lay down because they're closest to the bottom of the board, you know, closest to the surface. So they don't stick up. They don't get in the way when you're doing all the other parts. So here we have all the resistors. And in this case, this board. Why are people saying good morning? It's afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, well, oh, they must no, be West New Mexico Coast. is too. Yeah, 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 too, yeah okay. Yeah? Wait we, a second. We here. do have some Californians yeah, in there. Yeah, so yeah. They should just get on Eastern time and they'd be all set. I know. Okay, so we're going to take our lead former because all the resistors on this board are all 0.4 inch spacing. Uh, so we take our resistor uh, lead former, find the 0.4, and just take the resistors one by one, put them in the slot, bend the leads down. Okay, so you've got a 0.4 perfectly formed resistor. Sometimes when I have kits, uh, I run these, if, they're, if the resistors come on paper tape, then I run them through a machine. It cost me like twelve hundred dollars, and it cuts them off the tape and forms them at 0.4 inches. But 
but we didn't do that with this kit because these most of these came out of my bulk stock. So you just bend them all up. Do it once. It's nice and efficient. I hope everybody is doing this or has already have it done. We get any feedback on that? <laughs> uh, no, not yet. <laughs> okay. I put this title back up on the screen too, just to. Okay. Know. Well, I don't need to see where I'm working <laughs> now, so. So that title gets a little. You don't know how useful that is when you look through your old video files and you're like, "What is this?" Okay. So now I I can take these and I I have them in my mind what the bill of materials is. And I think the highest value we have is 47K, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes. Okay. So then I'm just going to find the 47K. Um, right there. There's 47K. It's a, it's a yellow, right? The last orange. Thing was orange. Yellow, violet, yellow, orange. violet, orange. Okay. Yeah. And then we do we have a 33K. I see a 33K. There's the 33K. Um, we got some 10Ks. Here's a 10K. Here's a 10K. Um, I don't see any more than that. 2.7K. Okay, 2.7K. Yeah. Uh, that looks to me like a 2.7K. There's a violet in the middle. And you've got There's a 0. 2 k that looks like a zero. Uh, brown, black, black. That's 10 ohms. Yep. There should be two of those. Brown, black, black. There's another 10 ohms. This uh, is a red, red, red. So this is a 2.2K. 2K. And, and we got a 1.5K. And a 1K. And a 1K. Which 1K is a 1% resistor, which is why it's blue. And it has lots of stripes on it because you got to do all kinds of zeros and decimal points and everything else. But I happen to know that's a 1K. So there are our resistors all, all sorted. So when I pick up this board, I should be able to find, uh, just find the location where there's a resistor, which are little square uh, monikers uh, or designators on the board. So it's a 2.7K. So now I can just go to my 2.7K and put it in. Put it, seat it down the bottom, put your finger on it so it's nice and flush on the board, then flip it over and just spread it apart a little bit. Won't fall out. Okay. So I'm just working down the board. So I see the next one over here is a 10K. So I can go right to my pile of 10Ks. And if you want to be very, very, I put the other one in backwards if you want to be anal about it because it's it Line reads, them all up with the right uh, color coding. Yeah, some people want to have them be able to read the color coding from one one direction on the board. So again, yeah, I would I would unsolder it if I put it in the wrong way. Well, so then see, for you, Steve, I'm going to basically turn that around. Okay. I do this for fun. I don't have to do it for work. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. I may as well. So now that. when I when I'm looking at the board, I can read the 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 code without having to go backwards, you know? And yep. I, if I ha have the board this way to look through the vertical ones, then I can read the code just the way it is from left to right. So I'm going down the board, I see a 2.2K. There it is right there. Uh, there's the stripes in the way I wanna read it. So I just put it in. Now, if you don't have a lead forming tool, you gotta bend them by hand as you can, you know, if, I know some people have been hit so many billathons with me and I think they've probably gone out and got one of these, these lead forming one, tools. You could probably 3D print one too. You could. It's a little bit of a, of a, uh, but now I don't use, well, that's a good segue to a uh, <laughs> shameless <laughs> commerce <laughs> because I do have one. I hardly ever use any of these. Oh, let me go to that. There you yeah. Go. Any of these really big spacings. I mean, we don't really get into that. I don't, I only use this top end of this thing. So I've got a friend of mine who's got uh, serious 3D printing capability, and we're knocking off sort of the top of this thing, okay? And we're going to combine that with something else because I have these nifty little things here that I showed yesterday. Where uh, let me get a let me get a well, drum well here. on camera just because it's so white. I know the white yeah. blooms those cameras. So maybe I should have that made in a different color. So here I 
here I've got a point. Uh, uh, this is an extra I just picked out of a can. So I bent it at 0.4 inch spacing. So I could put this in any one of these slots at the 0.4 inch spacing thing. And then I can just, whoops, I can just bend these leads out and take it out and cut the, cut the little feet into it. So there's a part that's perfectly formed for Manhattan construction. And this thing has one, two, three, four sides with four different heights. So you can vary the height of the part and you can make them all uniform. Um, nice little things, little key fob. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of those coming, but I've only got my prototypes right here. So I, I didn't, uh, I can't really sell them yet. And the other thing I have that's uh, being made are these toroid winding tools and you can, you can put your toroid in and then this thing here, you just take to the edge of your bench with a clamp and now you got two hands to, to wind your toroids. Again, homebrew supplies. The other thing which we are going to use are my brass set. Well, as soon as we go to solder something, we'll pull those out. So there's the end of the shameless commerce well, uh, department. There was a way to let people catch up if they were falling. Behind. Okay. Are we caught up? <laughs> All right. So I'm going down the board. And the next one I see is a 47K resistor. So um, again, I'm just loading the board now. We don't have to load the whole thing. You don't want to get the parts so dense that you really got to um, you know, work hard to get the soldering iron into it. So I'm just going to stop at one, two, three, four maybe six resistors so the next one i see is a 1.5 k there it is right there i'll go to the right um... now this board i did manage to get done right because it is a two-layer board it wasn't like my other one and you'll see it there's on the back side you can see well you can see it on your board if you turn it over and you look at it Nice rays on all the pads that are being grounded. That was the the level the the layer that did not get fabbed. I wish I could blame it on them, but it wasn't. It was my fault. So I got one last one. I'm going to do is the 33k. So I just put a 33k in right where it says. And again, I don't have to look at a schematic. Um, by the way, another feature about this billathon board is if you do look at the schematic. This board is laid out exactly like the schematic. So you can identify a, down a little bit. Down, yep. You can identify the thing. If you look at the schematic, it flows exactly the same way with the components laid out exactly the same way. Um, we work very hard to do that on a on a board. And and the other thing I added was on this on the oh. silk screen, it shows where the interconnect wiring is. So you can actually follow where that resistor is connected to. Uh, or any part, you can see the connection with all the other parts. So that shows the wire or the trace that's underneath. Uh, pretty handy when you're trying to debug a circuit that you can go from a schematic, you can go right to the part, and then from the part, you can take a look at what else is connected to it. Um, so, all right, now we're going to make some soldering. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I'm going to use my, my uh, cheesy little $17 iron I bought off of Amazon. Um, kind of like it for portable operation. Uh, I don't have to bring my big giant uh, station. Uh, I'm using brass shavings to clean the tip. Um, I also, to start this billathon, I'm just going to to take my, my tip cleaning compound. I'm just going to nice hot iron go in there and you got a beautiful tip on it. So that will start. I'll clean that off. Get that ready. I've got my iron set at 700 degrees, which I like to I like to run a little bit on the hot side. So then I'll take the other item I have are these things called the brass sets. So I will just take and and um, put four of them on the board. You got a little slot in the side and thumb plastic uh, nylon thumb screws. And so when I put those on the board. Now, when I turn the board over, it's perfectly stable and I can twist it around any way I want and solder in the parts. 
So here we go. We're going to do some soldering. Before There's my solder. Down, huh? Board down closer to you. Board down closer <laughs> yeah, to me. Okay. So now you got to, you know, you got to find the place to get that iron and the solder in. So the idea is you can just move this thing around very easily. Put a little tip on, a little bead on the solder on the iron and wait a second. Hit it with a little bit more at the junction. And you got a nice, nice fillet. So I'm going to use the back side of the iron and I'm going to go to this one. Don't don't force it. If you see it's got enough heat, then you don't have to, you don't want to add a ton of solder. You just want a nice smooth solder fillet. Paul says our audio tutorial and instructions are great. So Paul says that? Yeah. He Paul would. Yeah. He would say that. Okay. After every three or four, you know, I go back and and uh, just do a little bit of tip clean, just in case the parts are adding a little bit of dirt to the iron. I'm using a very small, very small conical tip. I didn't change it from yesterday. I could probably use a little bit bigger. These are very large pads, so I could probably use a slightly bigger uh, tip, which would allow more heat to get to the pad. So it would, it would solder a little bit faster, but I decided that uh, since People said yesterday I was going too fast. Hmm. I'll do anything to slow myself down. So hopefully I won't get maybe too we'll, much. Maybe we'll take a pineapple break. Halfway. Yeah, it might take I a pineapple break. Get any pineapples? Got coffee cake though. I think I'm out of bananas. Too. <laughs> okay, but see how I can just easily move this board around. And I don't have a big. I've seen big giant array that twist the board and all that kind of stuff. But boy, they're big and gummy. I mean, this is this is just. Uh, just right, I think. I see now how the board keeps drifting further and further up instead of down. All right. Well, you, yeah, you got me working close to my close to my uh, vest here. I, I should have fixed that overnight. I should okay. have moved that up, knowing that you were gonna. And you notice that it, that solder flows. Um, slowly on the grounded portion of these things because those rays going to the ground plane are sucking away the heat and see i'm having a hard time getting that to go so i will crank up my iron somewhat i'm going to go to 400 degrees c that's what's nice about this iron i can just change the change the heat setting just like dialing it up on a Station, I'll wait a second for it to, to uh, warm up. In the meantime, I'll cut off some leads that I've already done. Remember to put your finger over it so they don't go flying. Um, I was at a billathon a couple of weeks ago and uh, hosted down at the New England Convention. And the billathon that was in front of me in the same room, uh, their parts were flying all over the place. We were walking on them. Uh, it, it just... Uh, you know, you don't want to do that. I mean, you can do that in your own house. You... Not unless you like getting wires stuck in your well, feet. Well, that's my problem is I'm always the guy who gets them stuck in my feet because I'm the one who goes around stocking foot. Yeah. I hardly ever put shoes on when I'm working well, you got to get a toothpick into your toe once before you stop doing that. Yeah, that extra heat on the iron is helping out somewhat. I'm trying not to get too much, too much solder on it. Right now, I'm just I'm just reflowing these two that I thought were kind of cold. Oh, I hope I uh, hope you didn't just do that, Paul. Said he accidentally grabbed the iron in front and got a good burn. Oh, Paul, come on! You're more experienced than that. Okay. Well, oh, maybe not. Question from Matthew. Yes. The cross pins one and eight on the LM three eighty six. Hey, we're not there yet. Is a zero ohm resistor, and the board also calls for a zero ohm resistor from the 470 microfarad cap. But there's only one zero ohm resistor. <laughs> we're gonna make the other pins. ones. Yeah, we're gonna make the other ones. It's just it's just wire. Same as it as a as a cut off piece of lead, which is why you don't let them fly because later on you might need one as a yeah. as a zero ohm jumper. Yep. 
Where does the second 10 ohm? Sounds like you got an extra 10 ohm resistor. Because, oh no, there's two 10 ohm resistors. There's one on the amplifier circuit. Yep. Um, I don't have, I'm trying to run through the uh, schematic in my head. Uh, what am I looking for? 10 ohm? No, 10k ohm. 10 ohm. There's one. No, that's there's the zero ohm over here on the audio circuit. There's the other zero ohm. There's oh. one zero ohm. Here's the other zero ohm, but I'm looking for 10. So there's one in the audio circuit. And the other 10 ohm. Um, it, it might be that it accidentally carried over from the one from the previous day. 10 k so you get a free one. You Wait, get a free 10 ohm resistor. Well, yeah. I oh, no, oh no, there's three 10 k ohm ones. Yeah. Yeah, I only see one 10 ohm. One I on see. I see a 10 at the. Oh no, that's a pot. Sorry. Oh, go I, ahead. I see one here at the bottom of the board by the amplifier. Yeah, in the audio circuit. Yeah. Um, that's a 10 k. That's a 10 k. I. It might be an extra. Well, it definitely has two 10 ohm resistors on the bill of materials. Okay. Don't worry about it. We'll find out because if we build it, well, I'm not building by the schematic. I'm not building by the bill of materials. Yeah. I'm building it by the actual board. So I'm going down and just following along the circuit. Here's a 10K. So get asked, my... Was this a separate order item or was it supposed to be included with yesterday's project? You would have had to order both kits. Right. This is this so they is were the separate order item. Yeah. This is the Sunday Billathon. Yep. Uh, which was the transceiver kit. Also have a second 10 ohm. Yeah. Somebody has. Oh. Well, if we come across the other. Don't worry ohm. about it. Forget about it. That's what they say in New York, right? Forget about it. Well, I'm trying to remember what component it was that I had in my hand that I had one left and I just tossed it in randomly to the pins. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if that confuses people. But. Yeah, but if the, bill of, bill of, if the bill of material says two ohms, you would expect two it to be ohms, there. Yeah. But then again, I'm not perfect. I probably, you know, I made many revisions of the bill of materials and I might have just accidentally. Hopefully you have too many parts and not too few. That is correct. I, I prefer to you have too many parts than not enough. So I just put I just put 110 down. I'm putting a zero ohm resistor down on the top of that, which has got a zero, you know, a single stripe, single black stripe signifying zero. Um, let's see, I got a I got a 1k sitting here, which is over on this point right here, and I gotta make sure I got the right 10k. Yeah, I think there's only one 10 ohm down there in the audio. <laughs> Oh, Paul says his soldering iron like slid off the rest. Oh, that's why I grabbed it. I well, hope hey, it's a minor. It but... was a it was a potential save that yeah. uh, was a costly save. Yeah. Okay, so I can finish off those resistors right there. I will say when you uh, bang the iron into the brass shavings, you shake the camera. I'm sorry about that. Nobody mentioned it, but I saw it. So. You saw it? Yeah. I'll try not to do that. That's me on the mechanical keyboard hitting it really hard. <laughs> Should never angry type, right? One, two, three, four. Whoops, probably that makes some noise too, huh? Yeah, and you guys probably notice when you ask a question, there's a bit of a delay for the audio or for the, yeah, for it to get out through the restream platform. I haven't timed it. I wonder how long it is. Well, Rex solders, I'll start up a timer. Let's see. Yeah, those, uh, those rays are still causing me problems. I'm going to increase my iron some more. Some more. I'm going to 425 now. You know, I only see that that um, 
soldering delay when I'm doing a ground plane item. You should move the board a little bit closer to you again. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a good 30 second delay from the video they see and what we broadcast. Huh. Guess we just have to get used to it. Yeah, well, we've seen it before. I think my video on that froze again. That's annoying. Okay, there are all the resistors. And gee, I got a 10, 10 ohm resistor left over for a free prize. Everybody gets a free prize. Yep. See, I don't like, now that I cut that lead off, I don't like the flow of that. So I'm just going to gonna reflow that one, one connection. And as they says, he's got a one uh, zero ohm jumper. So I'm going to take my little leads that I just cut off. I'm going to find the longest one I've got. I'll put it in my forming tool. I'll form it at 0.4. So this is the second zero, the yeah, zero ohm resistor. This is right, right down where it says QRP MEs. So I'll put that in the second zero. I mean, most, most... I think um, kit operations probably wouldn't even include the zero ohm jumpers. I'm going to, uh, no, it's okay. It's got a magnet. This, yeah, it does. The magnet <laughs> grabbed my, uh, grab my pliers. Uh, this has got a little bit of excess solder down there. So I'm going to just take it off. Um, again, these are my favorite uh, needle nose pliers with a rubber band on the back. So I can just grab things and hold on to them and, they're firmly grabbed, and I can insert stuff. I can use my finger to move it around and unleash it. So I don't want to... Steve asks, should we go ahead and put the jumper on the plus side of the 470 electrolytic? On the four side of the 470 electrolytic. I think that's probably where it... Yeah, that's I think... where I put one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's over. It's over on right underneath the LM3. So it doesn't matter. You can put it either way, either place. I mean, you could even keep it and have two zero ohm jumpers, and then, I mean, oh, the 10k, uh, the 10 ohm. I'm sorry. Yeah, the 10 ohm. He's talking, not a zero ohm jumper. He said to put a jumper on the plus side of the 470 electrolytic. No. I think he's talking about this one over here underneath the uh well the plus side is over there i just put it up i just know that's the minus side isn't it this is the minus side right here i put a zero yeah. ohm jumper here just a just oh, a, is, a that lead. A, is that a zero ohm on the other and the side zero ohm jumper is over here and if you only got one in the kit, then there it is right. There's the one I did, and I just put a, a cut lead there. Okay. That's all it is. It's just a zero-ohm jumper. It's just a cut lead with a, with a conformal body around it. So the, uh, the machine that au does automatic pick and place when they build boards, it doesn't know how to – I mean, Chinese machines know how to do with wire because they just pull up a big wire, and it cuts wire yeah. as zero-ohm jumpers. But – some machines actually need a resistor body. So John also asked or said or asked, you don't use the one black band resistor instead of jumper. The one black band resistor is a zero ohm. Yeah. Black so is zero. So you don't you don't have to use the you don't have to, no. Yeah. You can save it if you want. Yeah, you can save it and just use another jumper. It, it's got no resistance, like Rex was saying. It's mostly so that the machines can pick it. Yeah, the it. machines have to grab it. And so uh, I mean I, I like them if I'm jumping over a wire yeah. uh, or a tray sometimes I like it just so it keeps the wire up, but you notice that I'm not jumping over anything here as a way of a wire or anything. But I did keep it up off the board. You can actually see I can slip up. 
I can slip a screwdriver blade underneath it. So I did yeah. not bury that thing right down to the yeah. to the flat. So there's all my resistors are gone. I'll take that that uh, thing away, and I got a nice neat little pile of that nobody can see because it's too far up. All right, I'm moving it down. So it's, <laughs> it's in, there's all my cut leads right there. Even shorties for I cut off for the feet. They're all in that nice neat little pile. So um, just for the sake of 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 clarity, I can I can just quickly slide these things off for a minute. So now I can handle the board a little bit easier and go with other things. So I'm going to take the chokes, which are like resistors. You know, they look like the resistors, but they're a little bit tubbier. You see, these are tubby. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to get it. I don't know. Oh, there you go. I, yeah. Seeing how that's kind of a like a really chubby resistor uh, or um, they usually have a resistor. They usually have a little, a little concave part to the body, so it looks like a wasp body. Um, that's a surefire. And then sometimes they just look like a resistor, but they're green. Usually chokes are green or blue bodied. Um, but anyway, so there are my four chokes, and I'm going to do them the same with the 0.4 spacing. So I get my lead former and and space them out at 0.4. And the, they, they are banded the same as resistors. So, okay, there's all four of them all formed. So I'll just, this last one is a brown, black, black. That's one and a zero and zero more zero. So that's a 10 micro Henry. Um, now, I'm going to set that aside. Nope, I'm going to have to. Move down lower. Okay. Uh, this is the part where you have to refer to the schematic or, yeah, the schematic. So if you look at the schematic, because the bandpass filter on the board, the components are unnamed because that really is pretty much all you have to change to make this work on either 30 meters, 80 meters, 20 meters is the bandpass filter. So in this case, this bandpass filter is is set for forty meters. And which, if you look, which, yeah, I'm, I've got the schematic up there. Okay, well, you got to slide the, underneath the underneath the uh, filter. Yeah. Okay, yep, gonna here. slide it over. Yeah, or expand it and look, yep. and you'll see that it says, you know, there's FL one through FL eight, and it'll tell you exactly what they are. Okay, so what is FL1? Should be a 0.22, I believe. FL1 and FL8 are 0 0.22. 0 0.22. Yep. So here's a blue, a red, red, silver. That means 2, 2, and silver means um, below 1, below 1 microhenry. Yeah. So it's a 0 0.22. So I'm going to put FL1, I'm going to put the 0 0.22 in, and I know it goes on the other side. Because this filter is um, uh, like palindromic, you know, the both both ends look the same. Yep. Okay. Now there's. I'm just going to pick up one here. There's a brown, black, brown, which means a zero. A uh, one with a zero, and brown means one more zero. So that's 100. So I can go over here and put it at the 100 microhenry over in the oscillator section. And seat that down. I'm going to spread the leads out. So there are three of my chokes. The next one is a, uh, let's see what this one here says. Brown, black, black. That's the 10. And this one says red, red, black, which is 22. And I happen to know 22 goes up in the collector of the final transistor. So I'll put that in. Seat it down. And that leaves this 110, brown, black, black, silver. And I do believe that's FL5. F, uh, FL5 was brown, black, black, gold. What did you just say? Did you say brown, black, black? 
Brown, black, black, silver. So it has FL5 has 10 microhenries. Right. Okay, silver I think means... Is that the tolerance? Yeah, it's 10%. Okay. Um, ordinarily, if you know, I mean, ideally yeah. you'd want black, 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 brown, black, black, gold meaning 5%. Uh, but it's very hard to find them. Because <laughs> um, I thought on one of the others you said it was 10 microhenry. Yeah, it, it, it varies. Well, see, here's red, red, black, silver. Yeah. Okay, that is silver. It wasn't gold. Uh, very hard, again, very hard to read those colors yeah. on these things. They, they really do not do a good job. Now, I do not have to use my little um, brass sets. When I've when I've got everything is uniformly, um, yeah. You now the resistors and the chokes are all pretty much the same size, so the board pretty much sits flat. It rocks a little bit because this tubby cap in the middle, I mean the tubby uh, 100 microhenry uh, choke, but I can deal with that because what I do is I get my. I'm not sure what Doug is trying to say. He yeah. says a W3 EDP wire antenna. Oh, W3 EDP wire antenna tuner. That's on the accessory one from yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Doug, if there's a question in there, let me know. Let us know. Okay, so I'm now soldering these chokes. I increased the temperature to 425 and it's soldering a little bit better now. Okay, we're, we're well on schedule. Hopefully we'll have enough time to go through the fixes for the other board. Yes, we got some information on that from yesterday. Yeah, I'm still having with this iron, I'm still having a little bit, of, even at 425, a little bit of trouble getting heat to the pads that, are, that have rays going to ground. That, um, Be curious to see if it actually uses 80 watts. Yeah, I gotta look that one up. I mean, I you know how they cheat on everything. Well, yeah, I'm thinking just plug it into a watt meter and see what yeah. it's pulling. I mean, there's gonna be a little bit of loss, but you would expect it to be pulling close to 80 watts. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Whoops. Okay, I missed that one. Shiny light. Uh, what colors are FL1 and FL3? FL1, FL. But. FL2, 3, and 4. So. Okay, what do we got? FL1. FL1 that's the 0. 0.22, which is the. Red, red, silver, silver. Red, red, silver, silver. They're that, the big that, tubby yeah, ones. That would be FL1 one and one FL8. And okay, then, oh, FL2 and FL6 are capacitors, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah, so you, you see they got a little oval. They're yeah, a capacitor. So FL2 and 3 don't have colors. Same with 7 and 6. Correct. FL4. Is there an FL4? Yeah, that's a capacitor, that's a capacitor well. also. Yeah, so yes. We, we haven't got there yet. Yeah. We've been doing all these axial uh, low things that yeah. look like resistors. But 2, 3, and 4 don't have colors. Oh, i got to cut um, these off. 2 is a 1,000 PF. Three is 1,200 PF, and four is 47 PF. And that is on the schematic. Yep. I have to do that. I, I, I probably could have put a table on here, but you can't oh. put... I did on one of my kits, and it got really ugly putting a table of the, the filter values for all the different bands you want that yeah. you might be interested in putting it on. So I just we just left it on the schematic. Yeah, I... Then I'll put the I put the schematic that section of the schematic back yeah. up on the screen. So are the choke silk screen with slashes in the loops? 
chokes silk screen with slashes and loops. Yeah. 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 That in, indicates wires, you know, a, a winding yeah, like a solenoid. As opposed to the resistor. Right. The yeah. resistor is just a square box, a rectangular box. Okay, and so now I show up. I've got the chokes done. Is everybody up on the chokes? Anybody need a little bit of extra time for that? Well, we have a thirty-second delay. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I can guess wait what? thirty seconds. I guess uh, I guess I'll wait thirty this could seconds. Could be your pineapple break, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'll form another couple of parts. No, I think we're all set there. Man, I'll all take right. a drink of water. Okay, so Doug expanded a W3 EDP wire antenna with a W3 EDP wire antenna tuner included with the accessory board was a great addition. Do you offer W3 EDP tuner and wire only as a standalone kit? Not yet, but I think I will. <laughs> well, you've got at least one customer. That's right. Perhaps. Okay. Yeah, know. one customer. Okay. One customer a product does not make. <laughs> but yes, I've been wanting to do a, a W3 EDP antenna tuner for quite a while yeah. it's very simple and i'm going to put one in a tuna fish can okay because that just that's the perfect antenna for a tuna can station is the yeah. w3 edp it's just a you know it's a 87 we uh just to be clear yesterday that that roll of big hunk of wire in there that steve and i spent <laughs> all saturday morning <laughs> Calculating out exactly 100 feet of wire as a standard, and then we got to we had to get some sort of a setup to be able to replicate that, you know, 50 times. And it it took us all morning long to get those spools of wire, so they, they should all be within an inch. Yep. Um, and most right. likely to the positive, which is perfectly okay because it's an antenna tuner, so you can tune it out. Um, but, but they are 100 foot rolls. So ordinarily, all you got to do now is, is measure out 17 feet, and there's your counterpoise. Yep. And that's what's hooked to the minus side of your antenna tuner. Uh, and then the rest of it, the 80s. Did you bring the wire today? Uh, I got one. Okay. Uh, I got one down here in a sack. I did keep one, but it was the one that we did first that was too short. So yep. here's, our, here's our hunk of, yeah, go to the top. Whoa, that gave nothing. Eh, hang on. Hang uh, I don't know what you go. did. You're the you're the man behind the curtain there. <laughs> okay, so here's our hundred foot uh, section. And as I say, it should be. I mean, we even was was measuring the droop of the wire. You know, the concatenation of the the hyper the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, what do you call that now? I can't remember the the um, the natural slope of yep, a. The, the, the... Of, of something suspended by two points. Yeah. I can't remember. It's, I want to call that the, the uh, hyperbolic. It's a hyperbolic function where, where you have a saddle. So we, we replicate that. So these should be as darn close as you can get to 100 feet as we could figure out how to do. So uh, so all you got to do is measure out accurately 17 feet and um, cut it. And now you've got your 17-foot you counterpoise mean. and your 83-foot antenna wire. Okay, we'll throw that on the floor now. We beat that dead horse. Okay, so now I've already preformed my two diodes, and we got a, um, a 4148 that goes down here by the amplifier, and you can see the little bar on the inside the uh, designator to show which way the stripe is on the diode. I put that in. John says the 30 second delays in case you burn yourself on the iron, we can we can mute out the response. To I that. see. <laughs> okay. And we have a 5818. Now 5818 is is a ah, Dave gave it to us. The cantorary. Can't hit I can never say that word. That that, that length along the yes. between when it hits a tangent right. upon the yeah, cantary. A cantary? Can, okay. Cantonary. Cantonary. Well, yeah. that's the curve that we we were trying to we we're trying to Every one of them has exactly, we let that thing slope until it just touched the ground in the middle. Yep. So everything was the same. So and I mean, Charlie Armitrop for that one. Yes, Charlie Armitrop, <laughs> my <laughs> physics professor. We really, he had us on the ropes yesterday. <laughs> uh, or last week, I should say. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here we go. Last two of my resistor type components. Let 
We got a 41, 48 down here. Okay. We'll cut those. Now, if you if you go and cut the one you last sawed it off and you put your finger on it, you might actually uh, you might have some words, unkind words to say. So you should go to the the first part. You should you should cut them in the order in which you soldered them, so that you don't catch up to the uh, hot items that you just put down on the board. So there are all our axial parts. Uh, you know, they, this is where now adding the solder bots when you go to solder. I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, brass set when you go to solder is it's helpful because now these things are going to be at different heights. So I'm going to I'm going to just get my point ones. I got eight of them. I'll get those eight out of the way. So I'll cut them off the strip right down at the you know, give yourself as much. Is the paint dry yet? By, from Monkey. The paint dry? <laughs> what paint? Did you talk about painting something yesterday? The paint dry. Clue us in. Who said that? Monty. Monty. Uh, when the which Monty that is. N5ESE. Oh, Monty. Oh, Monty. from Texas. Yeah. Hi, Monty. Wish I could meet up again and go out to a nice Greek restaurant. Um, the paint dry. I don't remember what that was all about. Dave asks, is it lead free or rosin core solder? Uh, this is rosin core solder. I'm old school. Okay, so now I've got my 8.1s. I'm just going to go down the board and find out where all these 8.1s go to, and I'm going to label them. I'm going to insert them so I can read them all in the same direction again. So I am I can read that. It's a 104, which is a 1 plus a 0 plus 4 more zeros, which happens to be 0.1 microfarad. So there's one. Here's another one. I'm curious about the video quality on there, and it looks kind of grainy when I. Well, hopefully it's good enough. Okay. Now we're recording in a nice high quality. Two's in. Okay. Three's in. Okay, 104. Where's the next one? Right here. Hey, Monty's cheating because he's just tuning in. He's not building anything. I didn't send anything to Monty. He's got enough stuff built. He should have a comment on how, how he likes a W3 EDB, EDP antenna. Okay, how do I get out of this foolish full screen? Okay, here's another one. Is anybody way behind and need to catch up? Should I do another pause somewhere? Remember, it's going to take us about 30 seconds to get your answer. Hmm. There's a point one here. One oh threes and one oh fours are the ground caps in many circuits. Yes. Well, they're, they're really, they're RF bypasses. Yeah. Okay. They block DC, so they establish a, a DC voltage point. But at RF frequencies, a point one might have maybe, um, you know, one or two ohms of resistance at RF. Yeah. So RF will shoot right by. So when you want to make sure RF doesn't get into a circuit, you put a 0.1 or a 0.01 there and let it bypass. Monty says he's got a W3 EDP with tuned radials as his primary antenna. Well, there you go. Tuned radials. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so so um, there are charts around for that kind of thing about uh, you know the optimum radio for a particular band and I think 17 was kind of generic hmm. or is it 
or is it specifically for 40? Monty can help us with that. Yeah, I don't know if it's... Help us, Monty. Help yeah, us. <laughs> You're our only hope. <laughs> now, this one will be for 40. So. Oh, there it so is. Yeah. Your... <laughs> it, got, it got hooked into some other one. I dropped it, and it got... Where did it go? Right there. Okay, so there are eight. I mean, I could continue on and do all the capacitors, but uh, eight's good enough. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna solder them in. I get my little blob, and I try to get that blob on the pad and on the part itself to get the heat flow. In, and I just feed it a little bit extra. Once I see things, you know, you can see when a pad starts to heat up and when it changes color, you know it's, it's ready to accept some solder. And that's when you just feed it just a, just a tad. Again, those uh, ground rays are, are um, they, they, they take that heat and dissipate it, so... It takes a little bit more time, a little bit more heat to get those. Totally isolated pads are, are a breeze. Oops, down here's one. Okay, is everybody with us so far? Well, I hope so. I don't see any more. Uh, you don't see any negative comments? No. I have seen no negative comments. I don't expect to, but, you know, you never know. Now, you know, I've got, I make so much money selling these kits. Where are they? Where are? Well, I've got, I can afford two, look, I've got two pairs of these needle nose pliers. <laughs> uh, one with the rubber band for holding stuff and one that's regular. So that's, you can also have two irons. You can have one on the left, one on the right, and you can have one that's got a much bigger tip um, for if you see something that like is connected to the ground plane, you know it's going to suck some heat. You get the bigger iron, mm -hmm. and you put on that, but you still have a nice um, pinpoint, a pinpoint yeah. iron for the tough stuff. Like yesterday, yesterday we had, you know, with the Manhattan pads, it would have been better to have two irons, one with a big broad tip with a lot of heat passage, and another one that's very fine to get in on those smaller pads. This is one of my typical billathon boards, and the, all the pads are fairly substantial, big round pads, big wide traces. Matthew says, "So far, so good." So, all right, yeah. as long as Matthew's with us, we're okay. Yep. We're just coming up on two o'clock. So that's one hour in? Yep. We're well, a we good got, time. Yeah, we got we're we're doing good. Okay. We'll pull all these things off. And if if not, I can always pull the switcheroo. Well, I say that we'll we'll see how things work out as we get to the Oh, I think we're uh, this was I built one last night. It's a you know fairly straightforward, not anything that was like yesterday. Yeah, I feel like the through hole kind of built faster anyway. Well, it does build faster, but I'll tell you one thing: if you want to modify this and and play around with it, it's a little bit it's harder. It's a 
Yeah. It's a bear because you've got to unsolder stuff with a solder sucker. You got to pull it out of holes and you have a much bigger chance of lifting traces. Yeah. Um, okay. So there we are. We got most of the caps, but we still have more. So here are these, these ones on twos, which I happen to know. Uh, these ones are 101, which is a one plus a zero plus another one. So that's a hundred picofarad. I can write them down, but I'm not going to. These right here say 102, which is a one plus a zero plus two more zeros. So that's a thousand. So these are the thousand picofarads, which are over at what FL, I'm going to say FL2 and FL6 or whatever. FL2 and FL6. Yep. Yeah. 1,000 picofarads. Right. In the case over here, we needed, we needed not 1,000, but we needed, um, 2200 so we've got a these are parallel so seven and three are 1200 yep okay so 1200 and 1000 parallel 22. is 2200 now i gotta spread these because i couldn't get these in 0.2 inch spacing so uh 0.4 inch spacing so a oh, 0.2 i'm sorry so i have to widen them out a little bit I'm going to form those by hand and I can put, doesn't make any difference which one you put it in. I just like to make it symmetrical. That's all. So I can read that this way. So so there is just going to use a a flat screwdriver to bend it a little bit rather than puncture my thumb with it. So they're very short leads. Uh, one slip of the thumb and all of a sudden you gotta you've inoculated yourself with with a one thousand picofarad capacitor. Why you have a red PC board so that you don't notice those things. Yeah, you right? don't notice the blood. So I've been building these things long enough that I can pretty much eyeball 0.2 inch spacing uh, fairly easily. So I'm going to make sure I got the. Nope, oh, I got to turn it around so I can read it the same direction. That slips right in there. I can catch that one with my thumbnail, but I can't catch the other one. So I'll just again use the flat or the screwdriver just to push it over a little bit. So that means now I can get the other, and I can tell they're going to be big because they're 1,200. So I'm looking at these bigger ones, and it says 1, 2, 2. So 1 plus a 2 plus 2 more zeros. That's 1,200. So I'll finish out this filter with those two guys. Whoops. Yep, I can read it that direction. Those are nice, nicely spaced at point two, so I just got to pop them in with the right orientation. Come on, gonna coax it over to the second hole. Okay. Up at the top is FL four, which happens to be a forty-seven picofarad, which I believe is this square one. Nope, that's 20, that's 22. So I'm looking for a 47, it's a 473. There's a 470. So here's the top FL4. Okay. So that one I got enough that I can use my fingernail to push over. So now I've got a I've got this uh, this one here which is 22. Is that right? Two two zero. That would be twenty-two. Is there a twenty-two in here somewhere? Um, yep, there it is. Over there at the right by the crystal. In the oscillator circuit. Yep. So we'll put that in the 22. 
What are the big square yellow things? Big square yellow things. Like the one you just the, put on? It must be the capacitor. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's that one there happened to be a 0 0.22 microfarad capacitor. I'm sorry, 0 0.22. I mean, sorry. Yeah. 22 picofarad capacitor. Does it matter which way the offset capacitor goes in next to the crystal? It does. We haven't got there yet. <laughs> Okay. Somebody's working ahead of us. Okay. So I can still see the board's kind of rocky now. So I will just add my four little feet. Offset capacitor next to the crystal. Pardon? Is that the big square? The square one? No, you just put the square one in. I put the square of 22. Right. Okay. So now I, I'm comfortably. Uh, Oh, you're, I think, are you, that's the little trimmer capacitor. The trimmer cap. Yes. yes. And it does make a difference because you want the rotor to be on the grounded side of that cap. Yeah. So that if you happen to put a screwdriver to it to adjust the tuning on it, it doesn't affect the capacitance. Yeah. Um, if you, if you was actually clamping onto the, the, um, the, the non grounded side, uh, then the capacitance of your, of your uh, hand and your screwdriver and everything else would actually go into the oscillator circuit. You want it on the ground side. Would one of those uh, plastic screwdrivers help you? Yes. Yeah. You know, I've got one of those somewhere. Easier just to put the component in the right way. Yeah, that is true. Okay, so we got one more here. And we got the one on the front end of this. One, two, three, four, five. And there's the twenty two here. Okay. I'm going to start far away where I haven't had the iron recently. Again, capturing every one of those leads with my other. He's just being nice to my carpet. That's right. <laughs> <coughs> okay, that's all the leads there. We're getting down. We got four capacitors here. So this one here are the two 101s. So that's 100 uh, microfarad, picofarad, I'm sorry, picofarad. Those happen to be in the the feedback circuit on the on the oscillator transistor. Right in the middle, and it says CBE 100 and CEG, which means one of them is connected from the base to the emitter, and the other one's to the emitter to the ground. So just to know what they are. Those are the feedback. And, and depending upon the band that you want to use, you might have to change those also. Pretty standard. If you go to any QRP rig transmitter and you look at the oscillator transistor and you look at the band, you'll, you'll be able to tell or guess pretty much what those capacitors would be. 40 meter, um, 100 picofarad is pretty standard. Look at that. I accidentally turned my iron off by when I set it down. Uh, so now I got to wait for it. Hey, we got a waiting time here. People can catch up now. We'll pause and wait for them to. Let's see if they've got any questions. Of course, there is a delay, right? Yep, there's a delay. So get your questions in early. 
ask your question. I think I might take another sl slug of water while I'm at it. Whoops, hey, I say I missed you. I missed a pair. Oh. No, that's when I, I that's when I discovered my iron was turned off. So uh, let's see. Steve said he missed something. Is the point oh four seven on the board labeled four seventy three or four seventy? Four seventy three. Point oh four seven. Well, let's see. Let's see where this label at. Mm, 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 mm. Four seventy three. Four seventy three. It says point oh four seven. Yep, and that one should be, and the number on it would be four seventy three. Correct. Okay, Monty replied about his antenna. He uses his. 80 to 10 meters works great. QRP, tad noisy on 80. Tuning radials, manual process, pain in the uh, backside. Although if you had a good analyzer, speed things up. Very tedious. I think a lot of people um, would 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 cut one. Uh, <laughs> um, and um, you know, look up what someone else has done and try to just replicate it in physical dimensions. But of course, that yeah. never is perfect. But in yeah. a lot of cases, it will yeah. get you close. Yeah, I mean, the environment in which you put it has different characteristics. Exactly. You know, um, like I have really sandy soil here. Yeah, and it it affects how the antenna. You know, it affects the length of trees, the ground. Area. Um, siding on your house, you know, yeah. when it, uh, if it's relatively close to you. Um, but it's a perfectly good antenna when you're out on the trail or something that you can, you know, put one and just throw the throw the uh, uh, counterpoise on the ground and then just throw the uh, antenna as high up in a branch as you can get it. So It will uh, work. John says he's not sure where the 101s go. Have we done the 101s yet? Yeah, that's yeah. the 101 is the 100 picofarad, which are right there at the oscillator in the very center of the board. And it says 100, and then uh, it should say 101, but this one is in picofarads. Yep. Okay, so that would be 100 picofarads, and then there's uh, CEG and CBE. And Steve asks again, maybe this might be from delay, which cap goes in the 0.047 holes? That would be the 473. 473. That's which I'm saying. now finding, looking for right now. 473. David there it is. Says, it's 473. Of course, David asks a question you were anticipating. Where can I get some of those board holder feet? Well, they have to be designed by me and sold by me. <laughs> But unfortunately, the machine shop, these are made out of brass and they're expensive and they're tough to deal with. And the machine shop guy who gets them, who builds them for me has retired. And every time I've gone to ask somebody else, they, I mean, the price has gone up amazingly expensive. So I have someone who's 3D printing them for me. And he just sent some in the mail to me yesterday. So I should have some sometime this week. Um, same thing, only made out of plastic, so they'll be cheaper. I sell four of those at seventeen dollars right now, made out of brass. Pretty handy. What we didn't say, and I'll do that in a second, is the fact that you know I'm known as the tuna can man. There's two empty. These are not tuna cans. These are. Um, Water chestnuts, because my daughter is a vegetarian, and I go through a lot of water chestnuts. And I use a safety opener, and this is for the people who weren't with us yesterday. But you can see, I got a lot of stuff on that board, but I can always find a couple of places where those that bowl will sit right perfectly on top of that can. So, um, so that works. So I'm showing you, you don't need... Gee, I'm cutting off my own sales here, but you don't absolutely have to have something like that, but they're handy. In a pinch, you can buy water chestnuts. 
or that's tuna right. fish or well tuna fish and stuff if you use a safety the safety opener yeah. then you don't have the thing on the inside which might interfere when you're trying to find a good spot okay i got one capacitor left what is this this is a k2j no that's the temperature on the other side it says 820 where does the 470 cap go uh, we've gotten to that one yet no we haven't gotten there yep okay uh, now obviously i oh there's the 82 right smack in the middle of the board coupling the oscillator to the final there we go so i can set that right back on my cans and find a good magical spot for it and i got my iron is 425 again 470 is going to go down at the bottom of the board. Oh, no, yes. that's the electrolytic I was looking at. Is there a regular? That's the 470 is the electrolytic. Oh. Is there another 470 or is that the only one? Yeah, well, only 470 one. in a little teeny pico. Oh, that, that's a 47 that's, PF. That's the 47 that goes up here on the in the FL4 of the filter. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the uh, the low capacitors. We still have the bigger capacitors, but I'm I'm building up. I'm building, you know, low to the board and going higher and higher and higher, just because it's easier to get irons and stuff in. So now we got we got these two um, uh, sip sockets. Here's a three pin sip socket. This is where you plug in the crystal. So. What I normally do is I get the crystal, which is in one of these boxes here, and I plug it in to the socket, okay? And then I put it on the board, and I hold it with my finger. I'll take this iron and set it on my can, and I'll go underneath the board, and I'll... You're totally gonna be off camera. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't. I can't do this uh, backwards. But what I do is I find one pad, and I'm using the can as a third hand. Okay, and I just soldered one point on this thing. See, so now it's now it's nice and solid. But I did that. Okay, I'm good now. <laughs> I did that to be able to to solder one pin. Okay. And still hold apart but now i don't like this it's skewed it's angled so what i'm going to do is i'm going to eyeball it and come in and just reflow that pin while i'm looking at it and i'm going to try to just nice and level yeah i like you know that's pretty good that looks good so now i can go back and hit the other two the other two and i've I've successfully put this very small part in without burning my hands, and it's relatively square and straight. That fly has made it way back. Yeah, he bothered us yesterday. So now I'm going to wait for those two, the, the two added ones, when, they, when they're cool. Now I can hit the third one and just give it, because I was kind of an awkward situation i'm just gonna reflow it and add just a little bit of solder and it's reflowed so now i can unplug the crystal and i've got a nice crystal socket in oh yeah okay it's it's a little droopy okay um so what's next we got a couple of transistors here and moving a little bit closer to you, there you go. okay so i've got now in my hands a 30 906 so that goes over here at this key so i can spread those things and put them in now you don't sink them down to the bottom of the board never ever sink a transistor down unless you're using some uh, microwave or something like that but in this case i'm leaving it you know like you know a little over a quarter of an inch because at a later date if i want to change it I can cut it off with the pliers and get a hold of those leads and pull them out one at a time with the and while I'm uh, my classic, my personal classic unsoldering technique. And 
I did a video online about that. So if you're interested, you can go find it on my YouTube channel. Uh, it works for me, and I never destroy a board. When you sink a thing all the way down to get the leads out, a lot of times you end up um, putting way too much heat trying to get the transistor leads out. Um, that you just melt the trace right off the board. So here are my my transistor pins. One, two, three. Now you notice it's a lot harder to move this whole conglomeration out, so I'm trying to have to I have to move my iron and my solder around to get to the right spot. Come on. Okay. So there's two transistors mounted in the right orientation. Now we're left with the with the big transistor. And we, for some strange reason, we got this other little thing left over. So what I do is you cut it with a, with a, or you can use my favorite tool, the old guillotine cutter. And you can get that blade right in there and the little, there's a little um, dimple there and you can, Cut it vertically, nice and square. And you cut this into three singles, being very careful not to put that sharp utility knife tip into your finger. I've done that before. So now I've got three single pins. So I can do the same thing. I can take this transistor and I can put single pins on each lead. Howard says it'd be nice to have a printed set of instructions for some that are hearing impaired. A lot to ask, saying uh, there should be closed captions available on these, Howard. Uh, I don't know if that helps, but. Um, well, I will I will be um, making a synopsis step by step. Yeah. It won't be a really detailed one, but I will do that. Uh, I've got a couple people interested in that. So, uh, unfortunately, I have to do that after I do this. One of the nice things is that the video is recorded, so you can pause and, you know, you can go back later and pause and rewind. I understand that doesn't help the hearing, but it does help the speed okay. issue. Okay, so by putting the, the, cutting it into a little pieces and putting them on the leads, I'm doing the same thing I did with the crystal. So now I can hold on to that transistor with my finger. And uh, pardon me for not being able to show you this. Well, this is maybe a little bit better this time. But uh, I'm just going to go in and... Yeah, the overhead shot isn't any better. So. I'm going to go in and solder one pin. So when I let it cool, yeah, see it's all cocky. So I can now sort of straighten it up and reflow that one pin while I'm looking at it. Okay, that's nice and vertical. I like it. So now I can go hit the other two. And everything stays in place for me to solder. Whoops. Maybe there aren't captions. I thought there was captions. I thought, available I thought that's why it took 10 days for the video to go up online. Yeah. Well, oh, where'd it go? Oh, that is some good feedback for Eric, though. They should have captions. That's just like. That, that should be standard at this point. There's so many automated captioning systems yes. that do a reasonably good job. Yeah, reasonably good. Okay, so I'm going to take that out now. Yeah. And I've got the socket for the... The thing about the final transistor is the only one really socket because that's the one you burn up all the time. <laughs> if you accidentally put a, you know, an antenna that's got a short or something, so you end up burning out your final. Or you want to experiment. So the idea is by having a socket there, you can do that. And by having a socket at the crystal, you can go and plug in any number of 40 meter crystals and operate on different frequencies. So that's pretty much all of our, whoops, almost. Okay, we'll put in a couple of big parts now. my computer making that noise. Okay. Wow, that sucker's hot. So 
here's I'm just I'm just grabbing parts that are on the sheet now. So here's a hundred microfarad capacitor. I look to make sure I know where the minus is, which has got the arrows on it and stuff. And there's a hundred microfarad there, so I can put that down. Here's another 100 microfarad, which is over here in the audio section. Minus is the minus side. There it is. Spread those leads out. Here's our really, really big 470 audio cap. That's over here. Minus side, is that away? Oh, well, let's just put those down. Let's put them down. This thing has burned up my CPU. That's crazy. Okay, there are those three train capacitors. I should make sure those pins are bigger on the next generation of this board. I'm going to redo this board with, with a little bit different configuration. Okay, so, uh, oh, now we got the little teeny trimmer cap. John is suggesting take a break so that oh, they take a break. up. Take a break. I'm off of that. I'll take a slug of water. Somebody else had a scram, they said, so take a water break. We're getting pretty close. Let's see how many parts. Yeah. I'll dump out the parts from the, uh, the capacitors. I mean, the transistors ready. The uh, heat sink is no big deal. A couple of connectors, a couple of sockets, pot. Yep. Those are big items. They should go really fast. We're at 230, 226. So okay. we got about a half an hour. Remaining in our right. allotted time slot. Yeah, but we run long. <laughs> we never we never have stayed inside our allotted time slot. Remember that first one was like Probably four hours. Probably in your lane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're lane hogs. Mm -hmm. Well, it's hard to do anything of any significance without, uh, without taking a little bit of time to do it. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not recorded. I mean, it is recorded after the fact, but. Yeah, we ran, well, we ran, what, about three hours yesterday? Uh, yeah. 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 So. Well, and out, yeah, because we didn't get the toroid until just at hope, the end. Hopefully, he'll have the whole three hours up online. I can't see why he cut it. But, well, we kept it. Oh, I'll put a copy on your USB. Drive. Okay. So now I'm looking at the the little trimmer capacitor, and I can see by looking at the bottom that the the adjustment screw on the top is connected to the bottom, and the bottom is connected to this lead, and this lead's connected to the. So that's the one that wants to be on the ground side. Which one? The one that's connected to the, the one that's closest to the uh, the one that sticks out. That's got the green on it. That's what you want into the circuit. Oh. Uh, Hang on, let me just put it in here and put it in the second hole here, and then I'll, I'll try to get it up close. Oh, hang on. Uh, okay. Right here, the green side goes, goes closest to, uh, let's see if I can go up. this way. Maybe. It goes up. Yeah, it goes up into the circuit. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold it down. I'm gonna, just going to use my my flat blade of screwdriver just to fan those things out a little bit so it doesn't fall out get a little solder on it not 
besides going to the ground plane again. This this iron is okay. It's passable, but it's definitely not an 80 watt iron. I still like my soldering station. I just elected to try to do this with something that that uh, the typical kit builder might have. So I'm gonna I'm gonna crank it up some more just to see if it will actually if it will actually throw any more heat out there. So I want to get this one here. Oh, eh, that's not too bad, I guess. That looks okay. So, all we're left with now is a potentiometer and some connectors and a socket. I guess we'll go after the socket next. We'll line up the, uh, the dimple with the dimple on the, on the socket so you can tell which side is pin one. Very carefully get all the pins in and I just splay opposite corners just over enough to hold that thing in and then line that up and what i do is i go i solder away from me so when i put the iron on the pad and i add the solder when i go to the other side of the next pad i'm the furthest away from the solder again so you just walk right down the line If you, if you went it the other way, then you'd be putting the iron close to a pin that you already soldered. So it's, it's uh, if you don't have a really fine tip, then you might be hitting the solder that you laid down for the last pin. Okay, so that's in. Um, next time, so that's ready for the, the, um, amplifier, so we can put that aside. Okay, here's, uh, okay, here's the potentiometer. We gotta, we look at where that goes in, and these things have gotta, I take and just make them flat so they're not dimpled. And then you gotta rotate them right at that, right at that. Had, and you can find the magic point in which in which it can be persuaded into the holes. There it is. Okay, we got a pot on there. So we're left with some connectors. There's a stereo jack. Again, I'm just going to flatten the the back pin so that there's not that. That's a self uh, self attaching, um, so it doesn't fall out. It's the, what do they call that? A, a kinked lead. Okay, so I like to make them straight so they fit in the holes better. I can seat that where I want it, and I don't have to worry about it. I can now get in there and solder those three. That one's, that one again is being is being uh, uncooperative because it's going to a ground plane. There's lots of big, big rays. Okay. Hey, we're getting down there. Here's the next one. This is one I called out. Um, uh, there's a there's a notched back. So when this thing, uh, the back pin is notched. So when it fits in, it sort of fits snug on the board and doesn't fall out when they're in assembly process. You can take just a tiny little piece of that notch off and that thing will fit in this this hole is slightly undersized for this connector but if you take a little bit of that notch off it snapped right in 
So I'll solder that one up. And again, I got I got a nice set of ground rays on that front connector. So I'll do the best I can with this iron. Yeah, this just doesn't have enough doesn't have enough foom for uh, things that are going to take a lot of I'm going to crank it all the way up to 500 and let it sit for a minute. And guess what? It won't go to 5. It goes to 480 and then stops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe we'll come up to 480 for us. Yeah, those big components are yeah, the minute you Sorry, got the minute yeah. you got a lead that goes right to the ground plane with a bunch of little rays, it has oh. a it has a problem supplying all that heat. So oh. fortunately, that's the last one of those. So these guys, okay, antenna, uh, you install it with the the uh, Your, uh, insertion two points two to the lines. outside edge of the board. This is one in which. It falls out, so you gotta. I'm holding it with my finger, and I've got to come in from the back side of the board and shoot it with some solder. Internet has been good at high speed this morning. MNGJ, I guess that must be morning. I got another one here for the power connector 445 milliwatt output. So that's Five, going in the right four, direction. Is that for the, that must be for the transceiver is 445 milliwatt. I doubt that. Hopefully that's not the, the soldering irons output. <laughs> okay. And I got a three pin over here at the, at the key end. On the outside. Oh. Ah, excuse me. Okay, now that I've got one pin on each of those connectors, see, now I can set it down and tackle the other pins. Get another one done. Once that cools. A little bit better at 480. I'll go back over this side, and there's the one I attached. Yeah, reflow that. This is the ground lead. Not bad. And this one over here, I'll just do that again. Okay. I'll hit that capacitor a little bit more. Okay. I think we're... Yeah. This one going to ground still a little bit ugly. Okay. I think we're there. So, uh, we can... When you put uh, the amplifier chip in, you want to make sure when you look at it that the pins are kind of straight up and down because they have a tendency to flare out in manufacturing. So when you put them in here, very often you bend them out and over, and that's bad. You got to wiggle it back and forth, and it fits right in. The crystal fits in. Uh, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the heat sink. Top, what's this called? A top hat heat sink. I'll put that on the transistor and put that in. Now, 
ordinarily you wouldn't have these really tall leads. So I'm, in fact, I'm going to cut them in half. You don't want all that, all that up there. So I'll just cut three of them at the same length. So now it's much shorter, and then now these leads are quite a bit stiffer. So that there. So in visual inspection. Uh, I like everything. And we're not missing any parts. That's good. Whoops. I didn't cut some leads off. One, two, three. There's one right there. Four, five, six transistor leads. Okay. It's built. Now, the only thing I forgot to do... Was I forgot to sell, supply you guys some wire to hook these things up. So, we're going to see if we can't. We're going to move all these. Oh, in terms of hooking the. Yeah, we got we to gotta bring in power. Hooking the two together. Or... We got to hook the two together here at the key and the antenna for the tuner. We're not going to do that right at the moment. Uh, what we're going to do is. Um, What can we do? Um, I forgot to bring my little dummy load. But if we had a dummy load sitting here at the antenna, I don't think that makes any difference. We got, we got. Uh, ah, Paul's saying he uh, works good on his nearby GP7 single sideband receiver, measured milliwatt at 445 milliwatt. Could really? We use it outside one of these evenings. Nice little rig. Uses homebrew. That 19... Paul, what a sweetheart he is. <laughs> and he uses homebrew 1979 tuna tin two with the tuner as well. Well, that's the build. Okay, so if you bring, if you bring power in here from your 12 volt battery, and you bring power, um, well, here we go. See, I I jiffied up. Here's here's yesterday's rig. Okay, um, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, so here's where I I was uh, looking at my straight key, trying to get Look, some signals out of down. it. Huh? Further down. Further down? Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to show you. Um, let's see. Um, where's I built a I built a little adapter cable. What did I do with it? Here we go. I got an RCA jack. So I'm going to plug this RCA jack into the side tone output of this thing. So there's the side tone. I'm going to hook it up to a 12 volt battery. I think either one of these, or both of these are okay. Yep. So I'm going to wait for a second. Okay, what else do I have to do? I got a straight key right here, so. I'm trying to move that in the frame. So you okay, so there's a 12 volt battery coming in. We got power, and I'm going to. This is going to be hard to bring in. <laughs> no, it's a Here's a stereo. Is a mono, mono speaker with an RCA plug on it. This is my little station thing I put on my desk. It's a really lovely little, nice. It's a nice little built-in reclining stand, nice and flat and skinny. So I'll hook this up to the side tone. Okay. All right. So here's my straight key. Ooh, we need more microphone power, don't we? Um, yeah, that's not really getting picked up on the mic. Uh, it is making a sound. It is. It is. Well, I mean, it wasn't des it's designed to actually go out and go through the in the, the headphones. But don't have a headphone. Oh. Oh. Let's see what I got. Okay, hold on a second. Let me see if I can't uh, jack into the headphones. Uh, Here, we can just hold the speaker up to the microphone. Well, I, I think we might get more audio out of the microphone, but okay. Here we go. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's coming through or not. I'm not either. I don't, okay. hear it on, I don't hear it on the speaker. Push the... Yeah. Okay. 
Wow, it's nope, it is coming to, through. It's not supposed to be very loud, but that's what I say. Let me just hose it up to the um, to the headphones because that might give us a little bit more audio out on the headphones. Oh, Jerry says he can hear it. Oh, faint. Faint. Yeah, yep. it's faint. Okay, so this is but grounds the, it's over. It's meant here. to go into the transceiver, so right and it doesn't have a really big audio amp there. Your wires caught up on the uh, microphone. Put headphones on the microphone. Yeah, the audio levels come. Yeah. Okay. It's not supposed to be loud, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's the audio. Now, I don't have a set of paddles. Uh, the way this keyer works, right now when it powers up, it's in the straight key mode, and I believe if it works the way I programmed it to be, if you hold, if you plug in paddles, hold both paddles together, push the fun switch down, and hold all together, cycle the power as you're holding everything down, they will come up in paddle mode. And now you've got a keyer with a speed adjust. Okay. I can't simulate that because I've lost my paddles. I don't have any paddles. And he, Steve doesn't have any paddles. No, okay. So we can't really show that. So here's where your, your 17 foot, uh, and you see it says R and C. Um, C is counterpoise. R is, yeah. is, is your... Uh, so the 83 foot section 83 goes foot in there. Goes on R and the counterpoise, which is pretty much going to ground. Um, yep. Um, that um, goes to your 17 footer. And then this comes in from your transmit, the output of your transmit board right here. That's off so okay. camera. Right. It's off. The thing you pointed okay. to was off camera. Sorry about <laughs> that. Here's, here's the thing. So here's, here's your key coming in and the stretch side tone coming back and then over here is the antenna so you take this two uh leads and go over to your antenna input and then your output is your bare wire um so it does work now the problem i had <laughs> you might want to disconnect the power just oh yeah we'll disconnect the power because we're going to end up shorting something out here in a minute yep. <laughs> okay so we got a couple of minutes we'll talk about yesterday's build because uh while it it's going to take a little bit of work um, it does indeed, um, a little bit lower down, a little bit lower down, right about here. The camera has moved or something. Yep. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll make sure I got the right tilt. The problem is you see all these places where it shows a ground symbol. Um, it was supposed to be grounded by a, another layer in the, in the uh, production file and that was dropped. So all the grounds don't exist. Um, so I had to find them last night. And, and if you'll notice, like, eh, let's see, can we get a close up here? Okay. So, all right, let's see. Let's see if I got I to gotta do this in reverse yeah. image here. Right there. So Move here's, uh, yeah, uh, right, right there. Yeah. Okay. So here's a little point that's supposed to be grounded right, uh, wrong way. Right there, okay. And you know, there's a on the on the board. You see a little ground symbol. So I just scrape off a little, a little bit of the of the solder mask, and put a jumper across. You know, and I can use either the solder leads. I put a piece of uh, seeing this little thin bus wire right here. I just use bus wire, and I and I tacked it to the scratched off place, and I pushed it down and put it right on top of the lead, and then hit it with a little bit of solder, and now I have no, a ground. Um, I have a document for this and I will send it up as soon as I get home tonight. Um, and you can show, pull up the, uh, um, two, um, oh, oh, oh okay. yeah, the hang patches on. two. Yep. Hang on. That's going to give me a second. Yeah. Hold on. We'll bring it, bring it up. Um, uh, but it only took me about 30 minutes and I made all 13 patches. It was pretty easy. And I'm going to show you. A, uh, yep. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. okay. All right. Now, if you if you look, uh, can you can you uh, elongate? You know, build it up so it's full screen and forget about the background. Okay. See the blue lines, um, and if you see, it looks like uh, they end in like a, a blobby kind of a scratchy thing. If you really actually look at the printout, I on purposely made it scratchy where you scratch off the the solder mask, 
and then put a, a little jumper from the pads to that scratched off place. And then there's one blue line coming from the power line in the middle of the top. Uh, and it comes down to a scratchy place on, I'm trying to, yep. again, I can't tell you which side because it's reversed and I, I get totally confused. But you can see it come out of the power minus and it comes down and it's, it's pointed and then it comes over and jumps to a place that, that's logged again, scratched off. And then it goes and you see that it says, uh, what does it say about something in two places? Yeah, yeah that one. Ground, and it says two, two islands. Yeah, there's two places in which the the flow didn't go into the island and it, well into all the components and it created an island. So if you jump her to the island as a ground, the island isn't grounded. So it's floating. So you have to sort of patch it together. And I will do a, I've got this all worked out, ready to send out an update. So the little blue scratchy things are where you should scratch off some of the right. solder Okay. Mask. And I'm going to, yep. I'm going to do that in a minute. Okay. Uh, but the one thing that's wrong is if you look, um, okay, I'm down at the bottom where you see all the, all the components that we put in a row. And see, I can't tell which is left and which is right. Okay, but if you're at, on the end where the key is mounted, you see the key location. Left you, is left and left is right. Is I it? Mean, left is left and right is right. So if I'm looking at this thing, I say all, you know, at this, the, the. I hope so. Assuming that what they're seeing, the word rig is coming out correct. I hope so. Okay. The word, otherwise, there's right. a weird mirror your Okay, so setting. if you go all the way to the right, you see where the key is mounted. Okay. Yep. Oh. Those are the two big gray pads, the two big gray circles. Well, this isn't this isn't the right image. Okay. Um, okay. The, yeah, the two big ground circles. Well, if you come in on the bottom over to where there's a 0 0.047 microfarad, and there used to be a 10K resistor there. Right here, where there's an empty spot. With right. There's an empty spot there. Now, you lift that, you lift that um, 10K, you take it right out of the circuit. And then on the bottom, where there now there's a floating pad right next to the 043, 047. With the little brown symbol. No, that's an 022, isn't it? I can't that's quite a, see. What that, is it? That, oh, yeah, I can't really read that either. It's that's, an 022. It's next to the transistor. Yeah, it's an 022. Okay, now you see on the bottom there's a pad right next to it where the, the bottom pad of the 10K is. Well, from there, you need to add a 1.5K resistor and go up to the top of the key because that's what grounds this side tone circuit it it i made i goofed up and i yeah. and you've I, got that written down i've got it all that. written yeah. down i got a post i just couldn't get it out before i came over here today yeah. yeah so i will put out something this afternoon or early evening and it'll be a nice little thing about how to do that so go ahead and give us back to live video because yeah. i'm going to grab i'm going to grab a if i have something Okay. Well, I just used it on this. I'll just use it on this board right here. Okay. And I'll show you how I would do. And here's my, I used my, my little handy dandy little tiny utility knife with a relatively sharp blade, you know, new blade. And if I, and you can see, oh, okay. Nope. See, here's a, here's a patch right here. Yep. Uh, here's one up here. Okay, and the way I would do that uh, is, let's say I wanted to patch this pin right here. So I go over to where I'm going to put my my uh, jumper, and I scrape towards the pin. And if you scrape towards the pin, you really, you know, the the pin is the the pad that you're going to to jumper to, is going to stop your blade, so you don't wind up going all over the place. So you just you just scratch off about three or four good scratches and you get what looks like a solid piece of copper there and then you come in with your iron and what you're trying to do is get that ground plane connected to that pin right so what i do i'm just opening up the the solder mask is a, is something so the machinery when it solders the board the solder doesn't want to go there so it stays away you're yep. masking the solder so we scrape the mask off and then we take some solder and we put a blob of solder right on where we just scraped to join the well, we don't off. join it yet, but we have a nice little pad of, yep. so of solder there now. And then what I did is I took my little, I have a little piece of, a uh, little spool of 
Um, or you could take your cutoff lead. You can. It's easier with this, and because we have a now a missing 1.5 k resistor that people need to add, they're not going to have one. So I'm going to mail everybody a 1.5 k resistor and a piece of uh, bus wire, and you'll do exactly this. So you take your solder. Um, this, I mean, this is the easiest way. It took me not even 30 minutes to fix this entire board. So you take your solder and you just solder a little bit to the bus lead. And now you can see the bus, even though that's tinned, I've got solder sitting on it. Let's see. Okay. I'm trying to find where the video is. Okay. So I've now spread some solder on it. So now I can come in on the board and I can go right across those points and I can hit this and that will, will take the two and connect them together. Okay, you just go back and forth a little bit, and you'll see it settle right in. Then, now that it's, uh, I'll do that, because I'm going to take this off anyway, because it doesn't really go here. So, hold on a second. Let me clean my tip, get a little bit of solder on it. Okay, so I'm going to solder those two, the patch in place. So I go also, to the, he corrected all his yesterday evening. Right. He must have been up as late as you were. Oh, yeah, I was talking to Paul late in the evening. I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to. Now, this is where it it's going to probably take a, big, a better iron than this. Because you're soldering directly to the ground plane now with not any rays. Okay. So I've made that bridge, and you can see it's attached. And then I just cut off the excess. Paul says he doesn't need a 1.5K. He's got some. I'm not going to send one to Paul. Yeah, yeah. Paul's not getting one. He's not getting one. <laughs> as much as I like him, Paul's not getting nothing. Okay. Um, so there's the patch that's made. Uh, and you just go to a couple places. And I've got it all called out and where to actually do the scraping. And there's one problem right here is this island where we've made a couple of patches to. This is not connected to any of the other ground planes. So, so I took a wire going from here to this ground plane, to that island, to the other ground plane. So it connects all the three ground planes together. That's the big blue that goes through the diagram. There's exactly, the and the big blue wire. Yep, to, okay. connect those, to connect those islands. The together. only diag the only thing that that diagram is missing is the 1.5K resistor going yep. over. So I'll get, I'll get envelopes out to everybody who bought the kit uh, on Monday. I'll put them in the mail, and they'll have a 1.5K resistor and probably four or five inches of... Um, bus wire and you know it's going to take them about an hour maybe to to patch the board and it will fire right up there's the one that shows the one there it is there's the 1.5 yeah k resistor so this has got red for the scratch off things and then the blue for how that yeah see it, it didn't stand out which is why i i changed the colors but i forgot to change yeah. the color of that other wire so but but anyway it should it and it works um the tuner uh, it's, it's kind of a standalone circuit all by itself. Um, it's sort of, you know, it's attached. Side tone is integrated from the keyer or the, the key itself into the transmitter. Um, and the uh, keyer mechanism um, goes in a, a different spot. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, I checked out all the pieces individually, and it does work. You put panels in here. And if you turn off the power and you hold down this button and close the paddles and turn on the power, it changes the key or changes mode to the paddle mode. And then you have the speed function. You can set it to whatever speed you want. And this uh, fun button, uh, that's function, short for function and for fun. Um, when you hit that button, it will automatically send CQ, 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 DE. And then you can just follow up with your call sign. Yeah. You know, we're finishing right at 258. 258? Holy moly. This yeah. is the first time we've done this before. Certainly, if y'all have questions. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple of minutes for questions. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I'm ready. I want a question. Come on, give me a question. Well, now we have a 30 second delay before we have oh, questions. Oh, man. So. Well, we're going to have to go 30 second long. It does this to us. Um, um, Paul said he got his up and going. Uh, so we didn't. We didn't power this one on or anything yeah we didn't try to go through all that because we you don't want to make sure time. you have the fixes for the other one and, yes yeah. yeah 
Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was uh, about 2.30 in the morning when I finally got um, everything squared away. And I got a, I got a, a transmitter board built, a transceiver yeah. board built, um, and then started, to do, started doing some documentation. Yeah. I finished that off this morning, but didn't get a time to get it out. It's still going under review. <laughs> by my my mentor qa <laughs> yeah going through qa my official documenter chuck carpenter w5 yeah. usj so he'll well, put a seal of approval on it and then we'll get it out to everybody well hopefully everybody enjoyed it uh we finished on time so that's a plus. uh that's a plus yeah and uh yeah well now i could try to make that transmitter work by just hosing in a uh a, a key to it but uh, I've I've done that circuit so many times. Yeah. Um, that I, you know, we've we eyeballed that one many times because uh, that was the first one I did because that's something that's prior art with me. The yeah. accessory board was totally brand new, and I went through five different variations. Um, you know, this is the version five board. Was it the same so version John, five? John no. asks. He noticed the resistor-looking items on the board with diagonal slashes. What are those? Those are inductors. Those are the inductors. They look like resistors, but they're coils of wire. So that's what the slashes are to signify it's a inductor. Yeah. Hadn't seen any other questions come in. So come on, come on, give us a question. Somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're off to their next session. It is three yeah. o'clock. Well, I don't know. Is there very many going after three? Yeah. Well, uh, who yeah. the hell? Who cares? There's nothing as good as this. Come on. <laughs> and they're all video anyway. Well, yeah. all those none of those are live. They're all videoized, so you can catch those anytime you want. Jerry says thanks. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of struggle to get you know build brand. I mean, these are new kits, new designs specifically for this event. Okay, and I tried to make them so that they link together, that they they fit a a um, a need. Yep. I mean, typically with these two these two kits. I mean, with a battery and a set of headphones and a set of paddles, or I mean, obviously I provide a straight key here, but there's much not much of a straight key. But you can jack in a key, um, and and uh, you know a better straight key if you've got one. If not, it's, it will will work. Um, Matt says thank you. Uh, Doug says I'm a bit confused. Does this receive as well as transmit or only transmit? It's a transceiver. It receives and transmits. Yep. Okay. So you should get both. Um, and that's why you got the amplifier with the yeah, it's speaker a, connector or headphone that, connector. Right, headphone connection. So, yep. uh, you know, when you're not keying down, it's in the receive mode. Yep. Um, this is a variation of my C Sprite, which is a tuna can kit transceiver. And it's very similar, but it's it's made in a billathon format. Yep. On the on the transmitter board, there's either an RCA connection or the headphone connection for the right. The speaker, right? Uh, I do oh. RCAs because a lot of times, it, you know, you tie it into existing tuna can stuff, and I have RCA yep. connectors all over that. Um, but you know, it goes directly to headphones, yep. so it's not really meant to have enough output power for a speaker. Uh, most yep. of the most of the time, the the, yep. um, the elementary kits are are headphone only. But as you can hear, I mean, it does work. If you get the right speaker, if it doesn't take too much current to drive the speaker, you'll get something out. You'll get a, a reasonable amount of audio out of it. Or you plug that directly into like the uh, the old Radio Shack little e external uh, oh, yeah, yeah, amplifier. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there are all kinds of versions of that. Or you can plug that directly uh, line into your stereo system. Yeah, I have one of those. Right that's, that's almost a line out level. They make a bunch of those now, a bunch of Chinese knockoffs. They There's a lot of Chinese knockoffs. Yeah, amplifiers. Yeah. And, and you can put in another, I think we bought, uh, I think it was 20 LM3D6 amplifier little modules for yeah. $15 or some stupid thing like that off of Amazon yeah. or eBay. I yeah, guess they it make was. them as modules for and like just a, a little, a little amplifier yeah. module. You can stick one of those on there and then have that drive the speaker. As long as you don't have too much output. So, okay. yeah, Doug says, great. Thank you. Already looking forward to the next one. You're making a lot of fun. What? Thank you. <laughs> next one. Paul's Jeez, I don't know. Here today. Dave says, thank you very much. It's great when we do it live. 
I think it's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, John says you he, know, John says he finally got the last two parts in. So hopefully. It great. Yeah. Great. Is that John from Chicago? Uh, Oak Park? AC9 UV. Oak Park, really? Yeah. I used to live in Southfield, not too far from there. So. Yeah. Yeah. I used to live on the Gold Coast. Yeah. 18th floor <laughs> penthouse. <laughs> Back in my rich and famous days. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we'll. Okay, I, I guess we can uh, close down yeah. the stream. And if you got any questions or any any further comments of that, you can you can always uh, send them to QRPME, uh, uh, Tunic and Kits or whatever, yeah. uh, and uh, I'll be open for that. I will try uh, if things settle down and quiet down tonight. I might I might on my bench go live with a YouTube broadcast, so we can do like a like a. Uh, you know, a debrief or, you know, questions that are still fresh in your mind or what have you and, and not build anything, but just basically have a, you know, a question and answer, dog and pony, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So Paul said he was asking if anybody had tested theirs. He finally, he got 600 milliwatts was what his final. Yeah. He's was. got a real fancy dancy so, yeah, uh, power really thing. Really he likes to that. throw that power thing on everything he's got and see yeah, how much yeah. he can get out of it. But um, I mean, his circuit typically you're not going to get, uh, you know, you can push your luck. Unless you're, um, uh, who was it there, Han, Hans? At the, the, oh, yeah, Hans Summers <laughs> in his, in his 4.7 watts out of his 2 in 22, 22 <laughs> oscillator. Yeah, okay. But, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, this typically is a half watt kind of a rig. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, if you're looking for transmit power, I mean, I do have a RF amplifier kit that is a half a watt in, 5 watts out. Now you're talking, you know, legal maximum on yeah. QRP, um, and that is designed for these typical, um, you know, low end, um, you know, one transistor output circuits that give typically a half a watt out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you get your, your, uh, that's called either a tuna topper or a Texas topper. Yeah. Takes any old, you know, half a watt garden variety transmitter transceiver and cranks it to five volt five watts pretty handy okay well i'm gonna hit end stream all right here. we're gonna end stream we're gonna say thank you very much for participating i hope you got enough out of it to be uh worth your time and uh i will make a uh as i say i will make a nice um uh, update this evening about um uh, fixing them and i'll send out the parts you need and the and maybe i'll even throw in some wire so that you can do some interconnect um but yeah, uh, we talked about the antenna, uh, 17 feet, you cut off that spool and the other rest of it's your, your radio or your, you know, your emitter and the 17 feet counterpoise. Okay. Okay. Yeah, All right. 